Welcome to Pacific Northwest Worm Farming. Today we're going to take a look at the Louisiana Swamp Worm. Unfortunately, as you can see behind me, they are quite buried. Got a bunch of insect things I'm going to have to move around, obviously some plants and whatnot. But I thought I would talk a little bit as I get ready about some of the hazards of working around a worm farm. There are all kinds of things. Uh, I would really suggest against doing these kinds of things if you have a lot of allergies. Um, a lot of the things that I deal with on a daily or weekly basis, like shredded leaves, my shredder puts out a very fine dust slash I'd say more like a particle size of, oh, I don't know, like lumpy sand. And it definitely is kind of potent and pungent. Um, another one is coffee, especially if you have a lot of coffee grounds and you don't dry them out or you let them sit for quite a while. They grow a mold that is very irritable. And it definitely burns a little in your nostrils. Um, that's for someone like me, obviously, you know, the more allergens you're allergic to, the worse it gets, you know, grass, hay fever, all those kinds of fun things. Not so fun for people, you know, so try and stay safe. If anything, because of COVID, everybody's making masks now, so it's a little bit easier. I myself, Unfortunately, I have a mask that's much nicer, but it's buried right now. I put a bunch of rope and uh, other stuff on top of it, so we won't worry about it. But what we do have to do is kind of move some stuff around, so I need a little bit more space than what I've given myself today. So, unfortunately, I have to take a bunch of this stuff down, you know, move it around. Obviously, you know, limited space. Um, been talking about you know moving some things around possibly getting a small storage unit to put a bunch of our stuff that we don't actually use even yearly just memories you know old junk putting that away and then maybe upgrading to taking over more of the shelving unit you know got a lot of space everywhere and it is adjustable so I could bring this down make more room put the big ones down got a lot of upgrade possibilities coming here in the future along with you know our new power sifter and all that so I'm gonna go ahead and put you guys on pause for a few minutes um, you know I guess today's big thing is allergens and you know dust things that are just pretty gnarly so we're gonna kind of focus on those things um, I'll get everything set up after I put you guys on hold and we'll bring down these swamp worms and we'll get a couple of really good shots today. Okay, now that I got everything all set up, I can knock some stuff down in the garage. But as you can see, we're pushing about, looks like 65 inside internally. So, get you a little close up of that guy. And then, obviously, you know, I can't pull the water out, so you can see the moisture, so I'll bring it in here, but you can see, yeah, I'm running a little uh, moist down here all the way at the bottom, you know, as you pull it out, you can see the moisture just drop, and then we'll bring it back here, just so you can see, you know, it's, oh, got a nice hard piece, maybe a pine cone or avocado seed there. But uh, yeah, just barely going down, and you can just watch that needle. So, knowing what I know about my moisture issues, bring you guys back in the stand here. We will be adding a bunch of dry material today. So, 
going to get out my cup. And I'm going to add my specialty products here. We'll have some extra materials that I need to add. The first one here is a very common one. We got Azomite. You know, I picked this up at a local store for much cheaper than what they offer it on Amazon. So make sure you shop around because... I found a local store that sells this for almost half the price that most of the Amazon vendors are willing to sell the same five pound box for. Now, seeing that this is 55 gallons, and this is my half, half cup, right? was a half cup at one time but it's a little bit less but I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle it you can definitely kind of feel from the leaves and the uh, uh, crap, diatominous earth in here which is that white powdery residue you see on top that uh, that material is definitely got a nice kind of burny So we had a little bit of dry material. I do have a bunch of freezer goods that I will be feeding them today because, you know, these guys are probably hungry. It's been a little more than a month since the last time I fed them. We'll actually kind of take a look. You can see some nice kind of, make sure I get you in here, right? This is the top, you know, just some barely down in there stuff, but it's already gone, you know, moist. As a matter of fact, I barely... I'm barely down two inches and I've already got a good amount of moisture and thought I saw a couple of worms in my hand but I guess I was mistaken. So I'll go down down see what we can find at the bottom. Who's munching on what? Who's doing what? Oh here we go. couple of them in here. Yep, there. Little guy, you know, nothing special. But he will, or it will, I should say, grow up. And here we go, kind of a next stage. You know, juvenile, not quite adult yet, not Maybe not quite ready to reproduce, but you can see tangled up here is a definitely younger, smaller worm. I will let them be, and we will kind of just start going through the bin, mix in this dry material with some more of the wet, and then we'll definitely, you know, kind of be on the lookout here for some more dry material. I think I'm going to grab my spotlight, though. Sorry, just kind of experimenting here. Well, I got you on film. There we go. Let's see what we're looking like now. Oh yeah, it's a little bit better. So here we are, kind of clearing that first very, very dry layer away. You can kind of look as I push it back. It kind of makes a nice power uh, dust here but this is what the worm bed looks like after I pull back all my covering you know, definitely gonna find some dried out chunks in here um, you can kind of see as I pulled back right here it kind of has a divot this is kind of where we fed last time in this bin. So, I bet you if I dig down in here, we will find, oh yeah, 
nice decent amount of worms in here and you know I I was seeing that there was a lot of moisture in here off my reading but I'm not getting to a sludgy like material so I may instead of adding just dry paper I may go ahead and wet the paper down yeah see here we go good old bunch of littles but still going strong nice amount of movement there definitely running from the light not sure how much you guys can see off that but I will definitely bring you in as soon as I oh yeah find a dry set of paper here definitely liking the, the texture and the buildup that I have down here um, see here we found a kind of mucky spot um, a lot of worms kind of just crawling in there um, this is probably part of the leftover food residue um, they're definitely definitely in need of food but not to the point of starving because it just needs an injection of moisture which is what I see in here from that food and then adding in dry material with it will definitely get me some nice material you can see here I just scoop this up and there's very little kind of mucky it's more of a dry crumbly and look at that I break it in half and here we go it is worm city not sure how much you can see but this big chunk right here is just infested with our little friends that are working all the night, all the day, to make a great product for you. There we go. What do we have here? Ah, pumpkin stem. Very slow to break down. Ah, here's an adult. Maybe not an adult, very, very large juvenile, but definitely got some action in here. Going to have some big chunks remaining because, yes, I did feed the pumpkin stem. I do have a lot of dry bottom material that I'm breaking, peeling and breaking up too. So, you know, this bin actually has um, a good amount of moisture. There's no super soggy parts right now because I want to say this one does better than all of the smaller bins because it is longer. Problem is that it's heavy so it does definitely make your job harder. But you can see in this one's case it has good airflow you know from our holes here we have a good dry level and it's actually a very nice moist level on the bottom. A lot of good worms in here. Um, I will definitely be adding a lot of material to this bin for the finishing touch just to make sure these guys get a good you know reproduction rate going. Um, plan is to order some more because we are starting to ramp up and get some people that are interested now so we plan to expand more concrete tubs you know you can see i can actually do you know six high on my stand and i want to be you know able to process this stuff in more quantity too i mean these guys are just doing an amazing job i i hope that some of my viewers here will be able to order this because this stuff is fluffy very nice, moist, but not, but not crummy, not crumbly. See, it makes a sponge, but crumbles apart. That is perfect. I want to make sure you guys get a nice up close view, so I'm going to go ahead and pop you out of the stand and bring you in to the warm world without making too much shadow. 
So here you can see this dry level of material and then it kind of goes in to this nice moist unbroken down broken down material um, see if we can find some active crawlers See right here, this little piece has just tons and tons of babies. Well, it's like you break a piece apart and then there's just babies everywhere. So these guys are doing a great job. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put you back in the holster and then we're going to set up a feeding patch and kind of mix everything about first. So stay tuned. So what I like to do with this is I like to try and find some food and put it around here, that excess moisture. All the bacteria from the food it'll bind to this and it'll help break it down faster so i'm going to make sure i keep this guy kind of up here out of the way while i pull this mound apart that i was building because what i don't want are balls to form like this so i like to try and see i found a rock in here now Normally, something like this, I would probably take it out, but I like leaving the rocks in here. They help break stuff up, give some places for the worms to kind of sink into, hide, move around. Also, rocks break down. That rock might have some good mineralization. I'm not a geologist. I'm not even a biologist. I am just a guy that read a couple of dozen books about composting, worm feeding, worm biology, and kind of learn some tricks from some pros by watching them do it a lot. That's why you can see I'm kind of moving away from these big hefty bins and moving into smaller pods to help them grow in smaller con quantities faster at first just so I can break it up. Okay and so at this point I kind of speed things up now because you know, this is a 37 minute video, so I'm kind of pulling apart a worm ball here and wanted to give you a quick view of it. But uh, I wanted to talk about what we're doing. We're kind of um, doing a different style of feeding. Um, instead of doing pocket, I'm doing um, third quantity area feedings, I guess. Um, I'm just pretty much doing the front third, back third, and middle third with these big 55 gallon totes, you know. We're adding about, I don't know, four or five pounds of food here in a minute. Um, I'm going to kind of pull out some frozen food that I had uh, pulled out previously to getting this bin down. And um, you'll see here in just a second, you know, I'll pull out some cilantro, um, kind of my green but this bin is very moist so um after i unwrap i'll set it down here on the hill um i kind of split it unevenly but evenly by kind of a weight guesstimate when i do frozen foods like this because i put together a meal for the bin or whatever i'm feeding that day and so what i did was knowing that it's dry but not extremely dry I dumped in about a third of a five gallon bucket's worth of paper, probably about a gallon and a half or so. And I wet it down kind of. Now I'm gonna un I'm after mixing it up, I unpack it. So I have just a very thin layer and I'll add in a bunch of that 
you know, mixture. So we don't get any kind of uh, compaction or really just packed area where a worm could crawl in and just get smothered because, you know, he was able to get in between, but there was no moisture and just got stuck. And that'll just create a big smelly mess you don't want to deal with. So uh, I add crab meal and azomite to kind of help put that dry material in there. Uh, I'll add in a bunch of other frozen fruits and vegetables that I have laying around. Um, the crab meal is kind of a nice uh, nitrogen based food for the worms. Along with it adds a nice benefit of um, I believe the word is chitin. Um, it's uh, insect kind of base material that plants, when absorbed properly, can um, help bolster their suppressance of insects, essentially. And then, of course, the azomite has a lot of micronutrients. Now, if you notice, I just cut that very frozen carrot up. Um, I like to kind of spread it out instead of like one big carrot or couple of big carrots. I just cut it up that way they have the ability to, as it rots and, you know, unfreezes, it just draws that moisture straight down. And then, of course, when I put the lid back on, it'll suck it right back up when it reaches its fullness. And then I'll add, you know, this layer of coffee and uh, here in a minute, I'll be adding some oats. Um, believe yep that's what i'm adding right now and i got these oats from facebook and i gotta say facebook groups have been one of the best things that i have found out there for free food for you know people seem to think that farm animals are great for it but can't ever get rid of it that was about three and a half gallons of oats that i've been working through you know along with a bunch of frozen food that is really starting to pay off. Actually, um, share waste has really gotten some good hits now for me. And I'm getting about a gallon of frozen waste a week, along with uh, some ground eggshells and whatnot that I am storing up. And then to help this, the stuff was kind of not as defrosted as I wanted to, so I kind of sprayed some water on top. And then, you know, I left that unmatted paper back there so I can mix it in to the opposite side when I dig it back out here in a moment, but you'll get a good sense of that. Um, I like to just mix in paper to help pull the moisture away, uh -huh. but you have to be careful because it will mat up on you pretty easily. Uh, but that's pretty much about how this bin is going to go. I mean, it's just mix it in, dry it out. I'm getting ready to um, sift this bin here at the either end of May or beginning of June just depends on how the moisture and how well they've processed everything. And then because I made it wet, I'll put a little bit of grain over here. Just as a mix for extra feed. And we'll even it back out. But as it even I flop. So paper got mixed in now. jumbled about in here, but we'll have probably added, I don't know, 15, 20 pounds of material in here now, extra from what I had before. Now you can see how my line is right here, whereas before, if I dig this out, you know, it was way down there because all this stuff settled, bounced around. That's that. I'm going to add some diatomaceous earth to the top, help everything settle, dry out, and keep all my insect population out. And that'll be it for this bin.
Simple as that. And that's it. I will put you on hold, get this bin put away, and see you back here for the next one. Okay, and we're back with bin number two. Now, this bin is a little bit different. Uh, I haven't checked the temperature or anything because it's been actually a little while since I was last here, but you can kind of see, or I'll kind of point it out, but around this perimeter right here, and then definitely this one right in here, I'm going to bring you out actually, so you can kind of get a better picture, but if you look, there's kind of this perimeter that really opened up where the worms have kind of just pulled everything down. And then you can see these balls, and then along the side wall, you can see these paths. But I don't believe those were worms. I believe they were this guy's relatives, the black sulfur fly. Now, I do get a few of these in here from time to time. You know, for the most part, this is the only one that I had in here. So, I will put you back up here in the tripod. And there we go. Okay, and so here we go with this bin. Um, kind of noticed that there's some very dry kind of balls in here. And it looks like what happened is that the coffee that I put in here was kind of not moist enough. So the worms <laughs> left the pockets and they just kind of worked around and they pulled stuff around it and it was just kind of surfaced up and <clears throat> excuse me so uh one of the things is you know i said i didn't check the temperature or the moisture but you know you can really see even after i drove everything back as far as the surface material i still have a pretty dry sense and here I was kind of talking about it, but, you know, almost 36 minutes of video, you can see, you know, even though it was almost three hours after I had done the first bin because I had a couple errands to run that day, I was able to see what was going on as far as temperature changes, and it was very minuscule. I, I saw about... 15 degree difference outside versus you know five degree difference in the bin it was almost 80 that day um i do have a fan in the garage that helps keep them cooler um right now it's kind of being used to blow cold or at least air across the plants help keep them evaporating but also it works in the same respect for the worms it blows air across those top vent holes that i've drilled in and helps evaporate the water i don't allow the water to evaporate too quickly that's why there's only so many holes on top you can see i've kind of been showing a lot of you know more worms because there's a lot more concentrated colonies in this one it's um, kind of like in the smaller bins, they kind of concentrate in certain spots. And then these ones, especially this one, they like to really concentrate in the corners. But as far as getting these ready, what I'm trying to do is essentially keep the other insect populations down because obviously I have to return over this product some of it at least because the worms won't have completely decomposed everything the way i would like it to um with the new uh sifter that we have constructed you'll see that here real soon not in the video but uh, a video that i'll be posting uh you'll see how fast we move through the dryer versus the wetter material i'll pull some kind of wetter compost that I'll have on hand. 
and I will try and sift that and then I'll show you how that sifted versus how our stuff sifted after the worms process it. It'll be relatively the same materials, only difference is that the compost that the worms ate now versus the compost that I'm making now. The wet season happened, so it's the compost is going to be more wet. I'm trying everything I can to dry it out. As you can see in the video, you know, I'm always adding more product to feed the worms, but at the same time, I have to keep the material at the right moisture level. And that is one of the hardest factors. Oh. Pardon me. Uh, that is one of the hardest factors when doing this. So I have done a lot of processing to get in my ingredients. And I found that now on the, you know, second time around, getting my timing right with keeping it dry and wet is a very big been a factor for me because you know if you're sifting these kind of clumpy wet s castings they're not going to sift well uh they're going to be kind of mushy and hard to get to fall through a screen and even a damp overly damp is tough. You kind of want it to be, oh, I'd say kind of like the consistency of coffee grounds. After sitting all day, if you just forgot to take the grounds out, you let them sit, you know, they're still pretty damp, but once you start putting them through something, they break apart. Yeah, you can see I just added some, uh, those coffee grounds have been sitting, you know, about a month probably. Uh, they were horrendous, I can guarantee you. Um, I kind of held my breath a lot of the times with these coffee grounds because they were the last of my main coffee source that I collected, so... Not only were they horrible smelling, but it burns. So you kind of want to just pass through it as fast as possible. Um, the oats, like I said earlier, they are a huge help in feeding. And a lot of my stuff I source for free in the sakes that you have to drive and get it probably. You know, cost of a little bit of gas. I can't see anything better than taking something that I know is going to the garbage, going into the dump, and could possibly causing be causing things to go wrong with us. And putting into these guys, yeah, I'll go. I'll go spend a tank of gas to get there. Not not that big of a deal. Uh, right now, I am currently working out a couple of deals with other places uh high hopes that a coffee shop down the street will contact me soon but um i really want to get out there again on that share waste go get that app if you haven't already put it on your phone get your parents to do it it doesn't take much but you know if you happen to be anywhere close to me and you find me on share waste, I'll even set you up with some buckets. So all you got to do is, you know, freeze all your stuff when it's when you think you got a good five gallon bucket, throw it in there. We'll meet up, swap buckets, done deal. One of the benefits. But one of the other things you have to really realize is that this is not an everyday occurrence. I don't feed these guys like this every day. I feed these guys like this once a month. It is a lot of material that goes in 
when you have to think about, I put a compost in there. That has tons of bacteria that these worms can eat. The once a month feedings that these guys get, broken down paper, all the vegetable, fruit, um, oats, you start throwing in grits, it gets immense and you can overfeed, but what you have to do is know your chemistry, know how much you're putting in. Right now, that's pretty much all I got for you. Hope you have a great day.